Hello and welcome to another video from Flash Jazz Cat and this is a follow-up video to the previous video that I just released uh, about the uh, VBXE adapter board for the Atari 800. Now if you've watched that video I'll give you a quick recap anyway if you haven't but if you've watched the video you'll know that uh, I described the installation process of this board. This is Candlo Sin's uh, VBXE adapter board uh, which is, uh, I think it's still available on the community section up at PCB Way. So you can go ahead and have that uh, board made up and sent out. So this is my uh, 800 which I've used for years now for development of the Incognito uh, firmware. It's got Jürgen's uh, Supercolor CPU card in it, which is great. Gives lovely high quality um, stock YC video. Um, and obviously this was the um, test bed for the uh, VBXE installation. Now the VBXE installation, even before this adapter existed, required um, a JED update, a CPLD update on the Incognito, uh, which I applied to my board. Uh, and a couple of years ago, I think, I tried to install VBXE using like point-to-point -point wiring. I actually had the thing hanging off the... <laughs> hanging off the antic socket on the CPU board uh, with a ribbon cable and the other connections are made to the uh, back of the PBI connector on the incognito and uh, it kind of worked it got I got uh, RGB video but I couldn't get um, D60 coding so D60 coding is making the VBXE hardware registers accessible uh, on page D6 You'll know that on uh, Ultimate One Megabyte machines with um, VBXE, you can switch between page D6 and D7. On here, uh, it's fixed at page D6. So the problem that I had back then was that I could not get um, VBXE software uh, to work because it couldn't detect the hardware. So if we fast forward to a month or so back uh, when I installed this board, initially uh, I was getting exactly the same result so uh, D60 coding didn't work so the FX code didn't work if you like and also the cold boot issue whereby the incognito with the new JED um, was failing to read the configuration from the RTC NVRAM on the clock chip was made even worse I combated that problem on this machine and other machines as well where it's actually reproducible uh, with an increased power on uh, delay to let the hardware settle and that works across the board but on this machine when I installed the VBXE using the adapter board that problem came back even with that extended power on delay in the firmware so couldn't get D60 coding to work so FX code didn't work and then that cold boot problem came back and then uh, because I, I, I suspected for quite a long time that this board this motherboard was getting a bit shaky because it's been dismantled and put back together that many times and I was starting to think that these edge connectors were maybe had seen better days uh, because sometimes I turn the thing on I got a red screen in fact the first time I turned this on after I installed this board I got a red screen and I had the whole thing to bits again, I put it back together again. Eventually it booted up, as I'd said in the previous video, that it was off screen, but I did uh, get RGB video out. But again, I could not get the VBXE hardware registers to show up in memory. And then, the more I messed around with the board, the worse it got and eventually it stopped booting all together. I was getting no sync signal, I was getting no clock uh, and I really thought and I did not have time because I was trying to ship out a ton of boxes because I wanted to be off in December, I wanted to close completely because I've got loads of admin to do, stuff like that and I had about half a dozen parcels to ship off all over the world and I wanted to get them out of the way and I did not have time to do detailed troubleshooting of this setup and it was a really arduous task to even get to that point and I kind of gave up and if you've watched the previous video you'll know that there was a gap of several weeks time lapse came back to this just to wrap that video up just so that I had something to show to say that the 
I assumed the motherboard had a problem, couldn't boot anymore, didn't have time to diagnose it, but that I would come back to it later on. Now, Candle Sin, who designed the VBXE adapter board, and along with Electron, the VBXE itself, he left a comment on that video, uh, which I'll go ahead and summarize to you. Down here, salt is a way of life. Obviously, the environment down here is all salt. The, the ceiling's salt, the floor is salt, the walls are salt, and to an extent, the air is salt. And you breathe that in, and you can constantly taste the salt. Now, the supposition, as far as Candle was concerned, um, because the only difference between my machine and his machine is that mine has the Supercolor CPU card. Um, there was some speculation that maybe that had something to do with the, uh, the power on delay issue with the NVRAM. Although when I was reading through the topic at Atari Age earlier on today, uh, I did notice again, I was reminded that Candle had acknowledged that he was actually able to reproduce the issue on his machine uh, but he had to use an NTSC um, Antic chip. But subsequently, on machines that I've worked on here, Atari's, both NTSC and PAL, I was able to reproduce that uh, NVRAM problem and also able to determinately fix it with that extended power on, uh, that extended cold power on delay in the firmware. So the fact that it came back when I installed the VBXE was very very troubling couldn't really figure it out so anyway tonight I got this board back out again and set it up now this time when I turned it on I got a red screen now normally when you get a red screen it means that the operating system ROMs corrupt or sometimes it means that the uh, the CPLD has gone bad uh, on the incognito or it needs a reflash various causes anyway but it's a sign that the machine crashed when it was trying to boot the operating system so anyway this is the board in question and I haven't even had a look to see what the problem is I, I, obviously I'll try and reflash the ROM that would be the most sensible thing to try uh, but if that doesn't work then something's gone wrong with this board now the funny thing is it's been playing up for that long um, very often I would turn this machine on especially if I had it loose on the desk the motherboard and I would often get red screens or black screens and the thing just wouldn't power up. So I remembered I had a spare, fortunately, which I keep um, and I'm going to keep. And this is from the same original batch uh, as this board. So I put this spare board in the machine anyway, not really hoping for the best. Because I'd uh, started to think that the motherboard had a problem with the connectors or something. I put this spare board in the machine and lo and behold... Not only does the thing boot now, so I've got legacy video, I've got RGB video. Moreover, the NVRAM problem on a cold power up, which had come back uh, since I installed this adapter board, has gone away. And moreover than that, D6 decoding now works, so the VBXE FX core works, so the whole thing completely works right so if we have a closer look at the board here one thing that i didn't cover uh, in the other video here is uh, composite sync now this contrary to what i said in the other video where i was uh, looking at the various um, signal uh, headers on the adapter board um, composite sync is actually taken here from the um, composite pin which obviously we've got the scc C board in here so this is this white wire here is composite video so I've taken C-Sync from the composite video uh, output here, which leads along to the interconnect here, which goes out to the monitor port. So this is the composite sync wire, and that's going to go to your uh, composite sync pin on the D30, the DIN13 connector here, which I've just roughly uh, wired up for tests. Uh, now the other wire here, I think this is the right wire. I really don't care at this point because I was just so excited to get this to work. Uh, this is audio out, and I've run that along to the two, the left and right audio pins on the DIN 13 connector, because of course we're using, as always, the 1088 XEL pinout here, which makes it compatible with the Cool Novelties 
1088 XEL DIN 13 SCART cable, uh, which is nice to have available. Now, before we can actually uh, use this spare incognito board to test the VBXE, uh, we need to update the JED file, the CPLD code on the board. Now, I noticed in the, um, the thread over at Atari Age this morning, there were a couple of questions uh, about this, uh, what uh, equipment do you need, etc., etc. So I'll go through it now. Um, so the there's a 10 pin 2 millimeter pitch uh, 2 by 5 uh, meal header on the incognito board you can easily spot that it's just below the PBI connector uh, well here it is on my the board I removed from this machine there's the uh, GTAG connector there so you need uh, a cable now there's a pinout um, there is a pinout on the Atari Age forum I'll link that in the description if I can remember to do so um, because it's a it's a non-standard kind of cable you won't just be able to pick up a cable that uh, well I haven't been able to pick up a cable from anywhere that has this specific pin out on it um, so you probably have to make your own cable but anyway I've got the other end plugged in to the Zilinx uh, USB adapter here uh, this costs about I don't think it's any more than $20 or so if you're uh, over in the States I think I paid about 15 quid on eBay. I bought two of them actually. Um, this specific one is the model JTAG SMT2. I don't know if they're genuine Zilinx parts. They're probably not, but they do work. Uh, this particular one works, and the other one I bought works as well, I think. So um, the reason I bought another one actually was because uh, I had such a problem getting this one to work out it was years since i had to um, update the jet on an ultimate one megabyte or incognito and this I'd, this adapter will do both because it's exactly the same pro, um, spi type uh, programming interface or jtag and i bought another one because i thought that i thought the adapter was knackered but it was something it, it's more on the software side so this is a, obviously goes into a usb port in your computer now the problem is with the Zilinx uh, Lab Tools software, specifically Impact, that's the um, part of the uh, software suite that you'll use to program the CPLD. Now, the Impact software, or the Lab Tools, in fact, haven't been updated for years and years and years. They're actually deprecated because the hardware that they used with is basically deprecated as well. Uh, these chips being, you know, about 15 years old or so. So you have to have a bit of a song and dance to try and get the, the software to work. Uh, the problems actually began around the time Windows 7 was released. So I think the software will run perfectly well under Windows XP. Um, and th there was a workaround to get the software to work uh, in window Windows 7, which I did for several years. And then, of course, we had, when, well, I skipped Windows 8 because it was shit. Uh, then we had Windows 10 obviously Windows 11 now which is what I'm running and it just it just flat out doesn't work at all uh, with Windows 11 no way what I elected to do because I've now got a reasonably powerful PC um, is I've set up a, a virtual machine so I'm using uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox and I've installed Windows 7 in VirtualBox Obviously, you need to pass the S the USB port through to VirtualBox if you're going to do it this way. I found this represented the path of least resistance. I mean, sure, I've got a spare laptop. I could install Windows 7 on a laptop or something like that. But for the fact that I'm going to use it once in the blue moon to do a job like this, it just seemed a complete waste. So I've got a, a VM running uh, Windows 7 and... Uh, Obviously, the Zilink software had to be patched for Windows 7 compatibility, but at least it does work. So if we now go over to the PC and I'll show you the process of updating the JED. All right, so this is our virtual machine, our Windows 7 virtual machine here. Now, annoyingly, the capture software doesn't show up the client area or the non-client area rather. So when I right click on the USB icon in the corner here you can't see the pop-up menu but anyway i'm passing through the diligent usb device uh, to the emulated machine here and of course i've previously installed uh, zilinx lab tools which i'll 
again I'll try and link to if I can remember to do so in the description of the video. The, the quite a lot of topics about this over at Atari Age. We've been through it a lot but once again partly my fault we haven't had a central resource. I, sh I should just put a page up on my website uh, that goes through the whole procedure so that it's written down. It's not going to take that long. It's just a question of sitting down and doing it and then we've got a permanent link that we can refer people to instead of going through this again and again and again. And it's not the fault of the user because they, the, there's just simply no definitive place that they can refer people to uh, with the necessary information on it. So anyway, I've previously gone in here, X setup, installed the software, it's a bit of a pain because uh, Zillix require you to have a certificate uh, which is free to register the software, to license the software. But of course the certificate doesn't work in an emulated machine. It can tell it's on an emulated machine and it's a known issue that it doesn't work. Um, how I got around this, to be quite honest with you, I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I can't remember because it was it was some months ago when I set this up actually. But you can actually use the, the software. It does run anyway. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go into programs. I'm going to go into Zillink's design tools. And of course this being a 64-bit uh, operating system in the emulator. I'm going to run the 64-bit edition of IEC Impact. So before we proceed, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to power on the incognito machine. So the, the 800 is now turned on um, because this uh, cable won't power the device. This is sort of in-system programming. So the, the, the incognito machine, you need to have the JTAG cable connected to the Xilinx adapter, which is plugged into the USB port, preferably a USB 2 port. Um, so you'll need the extensions uh, package for uh, Oracle VM virtual box. Um, you don't need uh, USB 3 drivers. We don't, this, this, I have patched this software, but it still does crash from time to time. Um, I suppose it's not really the fault of the manufacturer. Uh, it's not really in their interests to update the thing. So I'm going to click no here because if I click yes, it'll crash. Now the next question it's asking is, do you want the system to automatically create and save a project file for you? We'll say yes to that. And now we're going to do a boundary scan. Uh, click OK and see if it picks up the hardware. Yes, it does. That's great. That's exactly what we want. So if we and at, at this point on the adapter, when it picked up the hardware, the LED changes from yellow to green. So now we're going to continue and assign configuration file. Yes, we are. So that takes us straight to the selector. Um, and I want the uh, shared, so you can have a, a shared folder um, on the host machine in um, VirtualBox. And I'm going to pick this, well, this is the one I've used anyway, 27 away, 21. I'm assuming this is the well. This one works anyway, so we already know this works. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running through this process with you to show you how it's done. Now the problem here is we've got now what we should have is a table here with various categories like arrays, right, etc., etc. We can tick them, and it's missing. So this is the the sub the software is already crapped out to a certain extent. So you have to now do this weird. Well, I do have to do this weird process of okaying that. Now when you right click on here you should get program, it's missing. So what I do here is I go uh, cable reset and I do that and then I do that and then I try again and then all of a sudden the program uh, option has appeared so I'm going to click it and it will probably fail, oh well yeah it's going to work this time. So it worked that time. Sometimes you'll click program and it will fail and if it fails you can go into cable setup and you can play with uh, opening the cable plug-in. I, 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 it's frankly completely chaotic. Uh, I just keep going into these options again and again. Sometimes it doesn't want to work. And uh, I just repeatedly go into cable reset, cable setup. And finally, eventually, you see the, the program option's gone again. It's vanished. 
I don't know why. It's awful. Um, but you'll get it. You'll get it to work eventually, and uh, obviously it programs it. It verifies uh, the flash. But anyway, the if the incognito is powered up and running when you do this, the screen will blow up. It'll scramble. So you'll have to power cycle the machine once this is done. So that's it. Basically, that's it done. Now, as it happens, this board's already got the pre-release firmware I've put on. That's that's easy enough if you know how to use UFlash. There's instructions in the firmware uh, download. So you need, you're going to need at least incognito firmware version 4 uh, for this stuff to work properly. I think that's when I introduced support for um, the new JED anyway. So that part's already done. I'm not going to run that, run through that with you. It was the, it was the JED update I wanted to specifically cover here. Okay, so of course I did have the hookup point wrong for the uh, audio. It's actually down here on the right side of, I think that's R194. I had to look at the schematic. I can't remember these things off the top of my head. So that is the uh, audio hookup and that's going over to the DIN13 connector. So with that corrected, uh, we should get audio. So let's put the machine back together, the bit you've actually been waiting for, and test it out. Jesus fucking Christ, it's about time. Right, so let's get the lid on, the keyboard attached. Okay, plug our RGB cable in. Now I'm going to have to figure out if I'm, I think I might as well keep this set up if it continues to work. I'm going to have to figure out where we're going to put this DIN 13 connector. I was thinking of putting it on the back where the old RF modulator cable used to go, but it would be nice to have it on the side, I think. Uh, maybe replacing the channel switch. So we can do that anyway. So let's get the TV pulled out so that you can see it. So fingers crossed, everything works. Right, first thing, no cold power on problem, which is what I was getting with this board for some reason. Despite having the prolonged power on delay in the firmware, this board, the spare board, hasn't uh, exhibited that problem yet. So that's weird, but that's good news because I couldn't live with that. So there we go. So this, you, you get to recognize the uh, VBXE uh, color palette hue here. So this is Sparta DOS X we've booted into. And this is over RGB. That's another thing we'll be able to do now. Of course, with um, VBXE in the 800, we'll be able to offer the uh, automatically loaded NTSC um, VBXE palette as well. So that'll be good. That'll be cool. So let's go into the setup menu. So this is a pre-release copy of the uh, firm firmware update that I'm going to release before Christmas. I've just got to test a couple of things because I got into a bit of a rabbit hole with the old loader uh, because I wanted to fix uh, a compatibility issue with file names and one thing led to another and I had to change a lot of stuff. Uh, so I'm still working on the loader update, but it's, it's largely cosmetic. It does fix... Um, a bug in uh, the JED version reporting, which I've, that's been, for the past 18 months, that's been showing the wrong JED version. This board does have the version 2 JED, of course, and it's correctly reported now. That bug also exists on the um, Ultimate firmware as well, so that's fixed now. Uh, and obviously you get a, a slightly revised user interface, which I think looks nice. I think it's a little bit less and it, and it also uh leaves me a little bit of space in the rom for any bug fixes in the future because it was just so tightly packed before with all the the bitmap files uh that it was a bit much now the other thing of course which candle mentioned in the thread on atari age yesterday um or this morning is that the external select mode which becomes available with this version of the cpl decode that needs to be in PBI mode because you get two modes here. Of course, you get Colleen mode and you get PBI mode. That's a dependency to get the VBXE D6 decoding FX core to work. That wasn't what was stopping this from working. It's obviously something else. So let's go into the loader. So here we've got the, this is also pre-release. Um, loader update as again it's largely cosmetic but there are a couple of things I'm working on which I need to finish off here so let's go to old school lamers VBXE demo right I can't believe we're doing this on an 800 Candle's already had this running you can watch his video I'll link to it in the pre in the description of the previous video but uh, let's run it now 
So it should detect VBXE at this point, which it seems to have done. Press shift. Here we go. It works, finally. So there we go, we've got VBXE fully working, uh, the incognito appears to be stable, everything works as far as I can tell. There's all sorts of other things we can test on this, we're going to get hardware 80 column text. Alright, so we know the uh, old school demo worked, um, and something else I really wanted to demonstrate here is uh, Stephen's uh, scrolling picture demos. And uh, to my astonishment, the, the problem is I no longer have a, well, not that I can put my hand on uh, quickly, a compact flash adapter for the PC. I've been using SD cards for that long now. And uh, I tried to use it in the incognito with this SD2 compact flash adapter. And uh, it won't read, the, won't read the card consistently. So that presented a bit of a problem. So in desperation, I've stuck the side three cartridge in the 800. Now the side three wasn't designed to work with the 800. Um, I'll keep telling people this, that it just wasn't even tested. Uh, some people have said they, they have used side three in an incognito machine. And when incognito three comes along, by the way, it will basically be side three and incognito balled into one, which would be great. Can't wait for that. But I could never get side three to work. Again, using this, my original incognito board. Now, I've got this spare board in here, updated the jet and the firmware. Now I'm able to run the side three loader. I mean, this is all good news, but um, yeah, it's very strange. So anyway, I want to try and, uh, well, I can run these. Well, I did put the ATR on the card, but of course the side three loader will uh, run these demos straight off the card so we should be able to run this press any key to continue yes there we go there's the dog very nice press escape i think it'll go back yes it does so what's the other one scrollers here we've got kg.com doesn't that look splendid really impressive okay so we quit out of that was it q q to quit out of that one and we'll go to purple.com there we go look at that isn't that brilliant would you ever imagine you'd see such things on an atari 800 it's incredible it really is it looks really, really good. That I've seen lots of uh, VBXE demos, and so there's something about this that Stephen wrote. It just, uh, it's just really, really good. The scrolling's really nice. Very impressive. I just, I just can't get over this. It's fun, and the fact the side works as well. So the the problem with the NV RAM not being read properly. Uh, when the VBXE was in, that old problem that was overcome before, that's disappeared. The VBXE works now, 
and the side three cartridge works in, in the incognito 800 that's just unbelievable I, I just, uh, no and i'd given I, my assumption was that this motherboard was knackered um, well I'm, I'm pleased that it isn't um wow, that's brilliant amazing so it can run as anything else vbxe related on this card This is not an Atari ST or an Amiga demo. I just can't believe it. This is fantastic. Now if you press a key, ah uh, yes, the, I remember the problem with this demo is that the if you press a key uh, it registers the demo thinks the uh, blitter the blitter IRQ just fired it doesn't um, disambiguate the two IRQ sources um, there was another couple there wasn't there uh, let's see if this one runs ah yeah I can't believe this stuff's running off a side 3 cartridge in an 800. Oh god! Brilliant! Anyway, it works. So it works on Sebastian's machine, it works on this machine. I won't be happy to say that it works consistently until maybe we do another couple. But I've already got a customer who wants this done to their 800. So that's the first one already, and this is even before I published this video. I'm closed at the moment for December. I'm starting up again in January. I've got about four boxes, four large boxes with 800s, 400s and a couple of other jobs in them. So I'll be busy in January anyway. But there's usually a drop off around that time of year, the beginning of the year, where people recover from Christmas and stuff like that. These are things that have already arrived. So if you do want this done, if you want to get in touch, you can get in touch over the holidays if you want and we discuss it or in January. You can email me via the website uh, fjc at atari8.co.uk, flashjazzcatpm at atari age etc. Um, so yeah, I'm perfectly happy to do this. I'm going to obviously have to figure out how much it's going to uh, how much work it is and uh, put a price on it of some sort and I think uh, Jürgen's doing another run of these super color CPU cards as well at some point I've already put my name down for two of them because I know for a fact I need one for a customer and possibly I'll need two anyway so I, I told him I'll buy two as soon as he gets them finished because I love those boards I'm, I'm so glad that the SCCC hasn't been implicated in any of the weird problems we're having here i didn't see why it would all it is is a basically it's the same cpu board okay it's got surface mount components and such like on it they're probably a little bit better than the original chips uh but basically with a uav stuck on the um on the board integrated into the design so uh i'm very very pleased that that can stay in the machine and i, I didn't really see why it would cause an issue but now we know we can we already know we can have Sophia in an 800 you could even put both in at the same time actually if you wanted to be crazy and then you could have DVI out and RGB out and whatnot so now we can have uh, VBXE in in what is probably the most legendary upgraded Atari of all time thanks to Candle and his incognito board uh, and now his VBXE adapter i mean it's 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 not a, it's a bit of a marmite machine this is not to everybody's taste but it, it is fantastic it really is amazing i can't believe that it's so big and modular this machine hats off to uh candle for making this uh this jet update for the incognito that actually manages to run this whole thing stably at all it's absolutely incredible the, the amount of stuff we've got plugged into here yeah i've got the incognito 
VBXC, a load, I mean, this, the amount of copper and wire that's been introduced into this case is incredible. Now we've got the size 3 running as well. It's unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, really, really fantastic. I think these upgraded 800s are going to be absolute collector's items in the future. They, they, they probably already are. So the question remains anyway, for me, is where are we going to put the RGB connector? So what I'm thinking of doing anyway, because I've grabbed a, a, another DIN 13 connector that isn't actually attached to anything. What I'm thinking of doing is replacing the um, power switch here with this connector. It should, I think the slot is about the right diameter. So if we replace that with a, a circle, it should look pretty good. I think this is a sensible place to put it. The only thing that puts me off a bit, and I'm certainly not going to sacrifice the legacy video output because that makes the uh, that would make the super color CPU card redundant. And there's always the two reasons you should keep the uh, legacy video. I would say e. Uh, there's stuff that requires the um, PAL blending, which depends on S video or composite video, uh, as does anything that requires um, artifacting, composite artifacts. And also, if your VBXE goes on the blink, you've lost your video output entirely, but you'll be able to recover running the FC.com VBXE core flashing tool using the legacy video output. So there's two really good reasons why you should leave the legacy video alone. I, I, I wouldn't personally advocate getting rid of it and replacing it with RGB out, because there's a couple of things you're gonna lose there. The only thing that's putting me off there is, I don't think I'd want to have Sophia and VBXE in the same machine. I think that's a bit over the top. So I'll probably put the, I'll probably put the DIN 30 in there, because this is where I put the DVI connector when I do a, um a sophia installation um the, the only other place to put it would have been on the back here but that's, uh, i don't like things attached to the case so what i would do here is basically uh right, there's the switch i don't know up uh, we can have a look see what's underneath the board all right so if we Take this switch off here. Right, so we want the connector to be mounted to the board. So the pins mm, are going to come out around about here. And on the other side, what have we got? We've got an inductor. Actually, I think we could miss, if we cut that protrusion off a little bit there, we could probably miss that trace entirely. So we've just got those two induct. Well, the, there's a footprint for another inductor, but well no it's just a jumper sorry it's a trace that just hops from one part to another i think so we can easily move that inductor and put it somewhere else so it's got to join that point to that point or rather there to there i mean you could do it a little bit less destructively if you want to do you could mount the mount the thing upside down or what have you various ways to do it but i think i think that's what we'll do but that switch is just not used so i can clear all of that away Drill 13 holes in the board and the two strain relief holes. Mount this nicely on the PCB. It'll look really good. It'll look just like this one here. And there we go. RGB output. Okay, so I hope you found this one interesting and positive. I'm sure I did. I'm absolutely over the moon with uh, this development and the fact that we can now install a VBXE and an Atari 800 with uh, Incognito. Bearing in mind, Incognito is a required uh, component here and the, the fact that even side 3 is working in this computer now it's absolutely unbelievable so I'm gonna have to go away and uh, have a close look at this board see what's wrong with it I'm more than likely the it needs a ROM flash or a CPLD reprogramming but I think there's something more to it than that maybe we've got a marginal solder joint somewhere on the RTC chip or something I don't know um, I'd hope to be able to show you that investigation through an Amscope um, trinocular similar focal microscope um, with a camera port on the top of it but unfortunately the one I bought uh, pre-owned turned out not to be similar focal at all and when you uh, turned on the microscope uh, aperture at the top 
the left eyepiece stopped working and that's not simulfocal so I had to send that back which I'm a bit cheesed off about so uh, Amscope if you're watching and you want to uh, send in a microscope a simulfocal trinocular boom microscope that would be very much appreciated uh, one exactly the same as the one Lewis Rossman uses or thereabouts will do absolutely fine thank you very much in advance for that so other than that I'll have to buy one in the new year when I've recovered from the unbelievable effort of uh, repackaging a 26 kilogram boom um, microscope to send it back and apparently the, the fella I bought it from I won't say who it is obviously um, he, he watches the channel he mentioned this in a note when I bought the microscope from him and uh, it, I was so disappointed to find that it wasn't actually what I thought it was it wasn't a simulfocal microscope um, but it was a genuine mistake on his part. It's very easy to get confused between one model and, and the next on the um, Amscope website. So not to worry, these things happen. So uh, it's been collected this morning and it's gone back. Yeah, it's a shame because I was gonna uh, I was gonna do a close inspection of this board. So uh, anyway, yeah, I'm I'm getting off topic again as usual. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch, preferably in the new year, about having this done to your 800 please do thank you again i've got another new patron signed up since the last video so his name will be up on the screen um as we speak and uh so that's it probably possibly for 2022 and i will return unless i do make anything in the meantime i wouldn't absolutely rule it out um i will return in january 2023 uh, with more thrilling and exciting projects and uh, I've got a stack of boxes next door to get torn into. Thank you very much for all your support of this channel in 2022. It has been fantastic. It's, I know it's a modest small channel but really it's gone from strength to strength. Thank you to PCB Way for their uh, sponsorship of uh, videos in the channel and um, I hope we can continue with more of the same in 2023 and go from strength to strength. Thank you again for all your kindness. Thank you for the donations. Just absolutely fantastic audience. Fantastic audience. Can't thank you enough. And uh, I wish you all the best for Christmas and the new year. And that's it. So I will see you all being well in next year. <laughs> so bye-bye for now.